Up to the 30, the 20, 10, 5, Torrey Horton back to the end zone. The yard play, guess who? Body up the middle, making another move to the outside. 15, 10, end zone again. Nice move by Brown. He's got space. He's got six. 35 yard touchdown for Byron Brown. A record setting night for the South Florida quarterback. So far, a little bit of a high snap. Jensi right up the middle. Jensi has room. Ashton Jensi. Give him six. Second and low. Look out. Tries to beat it. The G5 Hive. All G5, all the time. Welcome to the G5 Hive Live. We are excited to bring you the G5 college football coverage you love each and every week. I am Luke, and I'm joined by my co-host, Justice. Well, if you're watching us on YouTube, please hit that like and subscribe button. If you're watching us on X, please give us a follow, a like, and a retweet. If you're listening to us in podcast form, please rate and review. And don't forget, the G5 Hive merchandise source is now live. The link is in the YouTube video comments as well as pinned on our X page. Um, at, and uh, there at the bottom of the screen. If, yeah, uh, let me, let me, let's, here we go. Find it. Uh, there we go. Here we go. All right. It is right there. Yeah, that's the, the best way to support us. Number one, like if you're watching right now, if you're on YouTube, hit that like button. Like the more likes we can get, the more uh, the algorithm likes it, the more faces we can get in front of. Um, you know, if you're not a, a subscriber yet on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. We're pretty close to 500. I think we're sitting at like 475. So uh, if you're not a subscriber, please hit that subscribe button on YouTube and Lastly, if you want some sweet merchandise, visit the link at the bottom, uh, buy some merchandise, and that's the best way you can support the, the work we're doing. All right. Well, let's get into our G5 Hive 2020, guys. Let's get into our quarterbacks. Now, our 2020 for the quarterbacks, you've got to be in the top 20 uh, for pass attempts, and you have to be in the top 20 for passing yards and if you happen to be in the top 20 in both of those you make this list so let's get into it quarterbacks chandler morris the north texas comes in at number one he's got the most passing attempts yards per game completions per game in the whole g5 he has the second least amount of big time throws of these 2020 guys the second least amount of time to throw of the 2020 guys with 2.48 seconds, yet he still has the most big-time throws in the G5 with 23. Number two, making a big jump up here, is Jalen Kitna, UAB. The last four games, he has been throwing a lot. He's averages 42 passes a game, 317 yards passing per game, which is second in the G5. However, he's got the second lowest ADA of the 2020 guys with 7.7. He's got the second most time to throw of the 2020 guys with 2.88 seconds. Crazy enough, in his four starts, he now has 12 turnover-worthy plays. The leader sits at 16 in the whole G5. So, like, he's chucking it. And uh, he's got a lot of opportunities. It just happens to uh, been working out in his favor. Uh, I don't know if we're going to talk about him at all in, today, but um, Cam Shanks... Uh, twitched up little wide receiver for UAB. They're not throwing the ball super far down the field. Like I said, he's got a pretty low A dot or average depth of, of target um, of 7.7. .7. You get Cam Shanks just in some open – he does punt return and kick returns for, for UAB. Like you just give him the ball in space and let him do his thing. That's why I think uh, Cam Shanks has, has shown up and shown out the last few weeks. Spencer Petras comes in at number three, Utah State, throwing for 304 yards per game, which is third in the G5. Him, Kitna, and Morris are the only ones throwing over 300 yards per game in the G5. Joey Aguilar, number four, App State, 18 touchdowns, which is tied for third in the G5, averaging the highest average depth of target of the 2020 guys with 
11.4 yards. He's got the most turnover-worthy plays in the G5 with 16. So he's checking the ball a lot, and he's putting it in harm's way too. Owen McCowan at number five, UTSA, the second most touchdowns in the G5 with 20. He is tied with a quarterback that we'll talk about later in Jordan Cloud. Seth Hennigan here at number six. Devin Dampier at seven, New Mexico. Seth Hennigan, Memphis Tigers. Devin Dampier, like I said, here at number seven, New Mexico. The most rushing attempts per game of the 2020 guys with 10. For reference, Bryson Daly averages 20 per game. Tyler Huff averages 13. So he's running the ball quite a bit. He averages 84 yards per game on the ground, which is fourth in the G5, only behind Daly, Horvath, and Huff. Number eight, we've got Evan Simon at Temple coming off their bye this week. Um, we'll look at what they've got going on this week, see if he can stay in the mix. Tucker Gleason, Toledo, comes in at number nine. He's tied with one other um, with at least with the least amount of pass attempts in the 2020 group with 31. Sneaky is Gleason with his 18 touchdowns, which is tied for third in the G5, but the least amount of completions per game of the 2020 guys with 19. I just talked to you about the least amount of pass attempts. He was tied with one other. That person is number 10, Jordan McLeod, Texas State, with those uh, 31 pass attempts per game. He's thrown for the second most touchdowns, though, in the G5 with 20. He's got the least amount of turnover-worthy plays of the 2020 guys with five. So he's been pretty efficient with the ball. Cole Snyder comes in at number 11, Eastern Michigan. He averages nine rushes per game. 12, Braden Shager, Hawaii. Number 13, Nicholas Fadiato, Middle Tennessee. Number 14, Mikey Keene, Fresno State. 15, Jalen Rayner. Arkansas State, he's thrown for the least amount of touchdowns of these 2020 guys with seven. And then EJ Warner Rice, he jumps back into this group. He was in there earlier, uh, been out for a while, now jumps back in. He's throwing for the least amount of yards per game of the 2020 guys with 228, averages one temp, one rush attempt per game, which is the least amount of these 2020 guys. He's got the lowest A dot of the 2020 guys with 7.4 and the least amount of time to throw. Uh, of these 2020 guys with 2.47 seconds. Moving over to the running backs, everyone on this list is uh, not, has 93 yards per game or more with at least 17 opportunities per game. These 2020 guys, again, um, are top 20 in total touches, in top 20 in total yards. You meet both the thresholds. You make this list. I do want to mention, uh, just as talked about at the beginning for Wyoming, Harrison Whaley did come back. Um, he had 27 touches for 170 yards and one touchdown in that game back, so he would have propelled up. He would have been above Ashton Genty. It's Again, it's a one-game sample size, so I'm not yet putting him in here. Um, again, he's he's only got four games to work with. So, uh I want to make sure that I at least mentioned it, but I excluded him from this. Ashton Genty comes in at number one, Boise State. He's averaging 200 yards per game, which leads the G5 in touchdowns with 20. First in the G5 in Fort Smith tackles with 83. we got Makai Hughes at number two. Number three, Mario Anderson at Memphis. Second in the G5 in receptions per game with four. Russell Faison at number four for Utah State. Number five, Marquez Cooper, San Diego State. Number six, Trey Stewart, Jacksonville State. Number seven, Ahmad Hardy, Louisiana. He's averaging 101 rush yards per game as a freshman. Second in the G5 and four Smith tackles with 59. Number eight, Dean Connors, Rice. Not getting as much rushing work of the 2020 guys. Only 12 attempts per game. However, he has 17 touches per game, leads the G5 in receptions per game with five. Number nine, Braden Sloan, Ball State, not getting as much rushing work either, uh, only 15 attempts per game and 18 touches per, per game. He leads the G5 in receiving yards per game with 39. Got Ishmael Mahdi coming in at number 10 for Texas State, friend of the podcast. Avery Morrow, Colorado State, comes in at number 11. Number 12, Quentin Cooley for Liberty. 
Ontario Brown, NIU comes in at 13 and 14. Terry on Stewart, Bowling Green, he's averaging the least amount of yards per game of these 2020 guys with 93. Second in the G5 with touchdowns with 15. Wide receivers. All the guys here are averaging 74 or more yards per game. Again, 2020 guys, they're going to be in the top 20 in targets and the top 20 in receiving yards. If you happen to be top 20 in both of these categories, you make this list. Number one, Nick Nash, San Jose State. He leads the G5 in targets per game with 15. Only wide receiver in the G5 averaging double-digit receptions per game with 10. He's got the most touchdowns in the G5 with 12. Jalen Royals, we'll keep him in there because I have a sneaking suspicion he's he might we might see him still here this year. So I'm going to leave him in here. Jalen Royals, Utah State, second. And the G5 in targets per game with 11. Only him and Nash are averaging 100 yards or more per game as wide receivers. Caden Robinson, number three, App State, finally got his first touchdown of the year. That's been my stat with him pretty much all year. Uh, he's yet to have a touchdown, but he's been getting a lot of uh, targets, getting a lot of yards. He's been Mr. Consistent. Glad he found the end zone. Well, except for Justice. He's like, I wish it wouldn't have been against ODU. But here we are. Uh, number four, Ricky White, UNLV. Number five, D.T. Sheffield, North Texas. He's tied for second in the G5 with touchdowns with Jeron Newton, who's not on this list, dropped out this week. He's got a 6.2 average depth of target, which is the lowest of these 2020 guys. Yet he's got a 9.4 yards after catch per reception, which is the highest of the 2022 guys, or the 2020 guys. Get the, get the ball in space for D.T. Sheffield. Number six, Corey Rucker, Arkansas State, averaging 10 targets per game, tied for the least amount of receptions per game of the 2020 guys with five. If uh, Opportunities there. If he can catch a couple more, that uh, he could really shoot up these rankings. <clears throat> Number seven, Jamal Pritchett, South Alabama. Number eight, Devontae Ross, Troy. Tied for the tied for last of the 2020 guys in targets per game with eight. He's tied for the least amount of receptions per game of the 2020 guys with five. Obviously, that that change there at quarterback Goose Crowder, um, not slinging the ball around has has helped or has hurt um, Devontae Ross. But he, he still, I think it was this last week, still had a pretty good game. But I just don't think it's as consistent, and you can know like when is this good game or not. Dante Wright, number nine, Temple, tied for last of the 2020 guys in targets per game with eight. He's last among the 2020 guys in yards per game with 74. Again, he had a lower body injury two weeks ago, had a bye week this week. I think we see him back this week. Luke Wysong, New Mexico, only one touchdown on the year. Uh, he comes in at number 10. That's the least amount for this 2020 guys, and he's got the lowest yards after catch of the 2020 guys with 3.8. Um, I hope to see him back here. Uh, it sounds like he was close. Um, I think we see Luke Wysong maybe work his way back up these rankings. Number 11, Amari Kelly, Middle Tennessee. He's tied for last of the 2020 guys in targets per game with eight. He's tied for the least amount of receptions per game of the 2020 guys with five. He's got an average depth of target at 14.9 yards, which is the highest of the 2020 guys. So, you know, it kind of makes sense. You've got the highest average depth of target, which is great. You're getting a whole bunch of targets here, but it's kind of tied for last of these 2020 guys, and you're getting the least amount of receptions. Obviously, the ball farther down the field, less likely to catch it. So all that math kind of adds up if you think about it. And then coming in at number 12, Camden Benjamin, Tulsa. Let's round out the offense with the tight ends. Harold Fannin Jr. comes in at number one, Bowling Green. He averages 10 targets, eight receptions, and 118 yards per game. He's got six touchdowns on the season. Number two, Tanner Kozoil, Ball State, nine targets, eight receptions, 72 yards per game. He's also got six touchdowns. And like you mentioned, Justice, you've got tight end Tuesday. Uh, features both of these, both of these guys. Holden Willis comes in at number three, Middle Tennessee. He averages six targets, four receptions, and 66 yards per game. He's got three touchdowns on the season. Dorian Fleming, Georgia State, 
comes in at number four. He averages six targets, four receptions, 44 yards. He's got two touchdowns on the season. Um, this week I, I, I switched up him and uh, Terrence Carter comes in at number five, Louisiana. He averages four targets, four receptions, and 64 yards per game. He's got four touchdowns on the season. The only reason I, I moved Dorian Fleming above Terrence Carter this week is because of the six targets. He's getting you two more. Still the same amount of um, receptions. Terrence Carter getting you more yards, more touchdown upside. But uh, if you follow the process that he's getting the targets, maybe the touchdowns and the yards come. But uh, that was the main shift this week. Justice, what do we got for the defensive side of the ball? All right, we're going to start off uh, with the defensive ends or edges uh, week 10. Um, these guys are all ranked based on havoc rate, and they also have to meet a snap count. Um, we use uh, 30 snaps per game as kind of like the minimum um, to make the list. But number one, uh, been on the list every week, been our uh, defensive player of the week multiple times, uh, Mike Green Marshall, havoc rate of 16.4%. He ranks second among defensive end and sacks with 10. Uh, number two, uh, Eric O'Neill out of James Madison, havoc rate of 15.3%, has a rush win rate of 16%. Number three, Bradley Weaver, Ohio, havoc rate of 14.6%. He ranks fifth in sacks with six. Number four, our defensive player of the week this week, Elijah Robinson, Hawaii, havoc rate also of 14.6% has 27 stops, which are stops on third and fourth down, stopping the opposing offense, um, and that ranks third among defensive ends. And rounding out the, the top five, uh, Brian Ugwu, Miami, have a rate of 13.9%. He ranks first among defensive ends and quarterback pressures with 37. Moving over to the defensive tackle, same stat, have a great, that's what they're ranked by. Uh, Anthony Hawkins, Bowling Green, uh, moves back up to number one, have a grade of 10.8%. He ranks third among defensive tackles and sacks of four. Number two, new to the list, RJ Jackson, Tulsa, have a grade of 10.3%. And he has 14 quarterback pressures on the season. Number three, Deonta Johnson, East Carolina, have a grade of 10.1%. And he ranks first among defensive tackles and tackles for loss with five. Number four, also new to the list, uh, Patrick Jenkins, Tulane, have a grade of 9.9% and has a rush win rate of 10.3%. And rounding out our top five, Darius Alexander from Toledo, have a grade of 9.6%. He ranks fourth among defensive tackles and stops with 17. Moving over to the linebackers, um, it's been the same group, I think, for three weeks in a row now. They just kind of change positions a little bit. Uh, but who doesn't change positions? And still number one, uh, linebacker Sean Dolak, Buffalo, 11.89 tackles per game. He ranks first in stops with 54. Uh, number two, linebacker Travion Barnes, Florida International, 11.33 tackles per game. And he has 11 total quarterback pressures on the season. Linebacker uh, Sean Dolak's teammate, Red Murdoch, Buffalo, number three, 11.22 tackles per game. He has a very low missed tackle rate of 10.6%. Should be noted that I believe there are three linebackers in college football with over 100 tackles, and two of them pay for Buffalo, Sean Dolak and Red Murdoch. Number four. Colin Ramos from Navy, averaging 10.88 tackles per game, and he has six tackles for loss. And rounding out our top five, Jaden Yates of Marshall, nine tackles per game, and he also has a low missed tackle rate of 12.2%. Moving over to our defensive backs, we're going to start with cornerbacks. Uh, the defensive backs are all ranked on adjusted net yards against per coverage snap. So it's basically a measure – how are they doing when they are targeted in coverage? Uh, number one, cornerback Deshaun Peel, Navy, an adjusted net yards against a negative 0.278. He ranks third in interceptions with four. Should be noted that, you know, usually in the NFL, if you use this stat, you're looking guys right around three. 
Um, and all our all these guys are under three. Deshaun is the only uh, cornerback with a negative number. Uh, number two, cornerback Dante Joyner, Arkansas State, adjusted net yards against of 0.097, and he averages 4.63 tackles per game. Number three, Terrence Spence, James Madison, adjusted net yards against of 0.113. And he ranks first in interceptions among cornerbacks with five. Number four, Torrey Richardson, Temple, adjusted net yards against a 0.231. He has five pass breakups on the year. And rounding out the top five and new to the list, uh, former uh, five-star recruit. Uh, he was at Texas A&M, LSU, uh, Denver Harris, now at UTSA, adjusted net yards against a 0.236 and has a quarterback rating against of 51.0. Moving over to the safeties, again, same uh, same metric, adjusted net yards against per coverage snap. And we have a new number one. Uh, Jerron Manning had been number one for, I think, since we started tracking this um, this year. Uh, but now Jacob Thomas, who was on a bye this week, of James Massa is the new number one, adjusted net yards against of negative 0.389. He has a quarterback rating against a 0.0. Uh, Jerron Manning, Old Dominion, number two, negative 0.361 is his adjusted net yard against. So just a couple uh, couple points or, you know, tenths of a point behind Jacob Thomas. He has a quarterback rating against a 13.9. Number three, uh, we have a pair of t- teammates here at number three and number four. And they, have, they have both been on the list a couple times this year. Safety Tyrone Lewis, Louisiana, adjusted net yards against of negative 0.2. He averages 5.5 tackles per game. And his teammate Tyree Skipper, Louisiana, comes in at number four, adjusted net yards against of negative 0.237. And he ranks fourth in interceptions or three. And rounding out our top five is Wydet Williams Jr., Louisiana Monroe, adjusted net yards against of negative. 0.067, 2.67, and he averages seven tackles per game. And that's going to round out our 2020 players, which are the top players at the various positions among the G5. All right. That's going to do it for the show this week. Come back and join us next week as we discuss what happened in week 11, as well as look forward to week 12 of the 2024 season. And as always, bring you up to date on all the latest news and happenings in the world of G5 college football. If you're watching us on YouTube, please hit that like and subscribe button. If you're watching us on X, please give us a retweet, a like, and a follow. And if you're listening to us on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, please subscribe and leave those five-star ratings and review. Thank you all for your support. Until the next time, we are the G5 Hive. Expecting heavy downpours all day today. You're a builder. You build. It's literally in your job title. Woo, let's hit it. A little rain isn't stopping you. Not today, not any day. Shouldn't your flashing tape be working through it all too? Only Frog Tape Pro Grade Flashing Tapes high performance acrylic adhesive sticks, resticks, and stays stuck even on the roughest surfaces in rain, snow, heat, and more. So you stay in control when it matters most. Show weather who's boss with Frog Tape Pro Grade Flashing Tape.